Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. If you are a longtime viewer of this channel, you know that I tend to do bath and body DIY tutorials. And if that's what you're here for, well, there's plenty of that on the channel. But today I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I get literally hundreds of questions every single day on my blog, on Instagram, on Twitter, on the Brambleberry Facebook page, and I sometimes, well, I never get a chance to answer them all. I'm super thankful that I have this amazing team of people at Brambleberry that help me answer things, including our customer service team at Brambleberry that are basically all expert level soap makers to answer any soap making questions you have. So today we thought we'd do a fun, like ask Anne Marie anything. And my team has selected questions and I don't know what they are. And if you have questions for me, I am happy to do this again. If you guys like it, just ask me a question below in the comments. And if this is popular, I will totally do as many ask Anne Marie's as possible. Or if you guys are like, nope, go back to soap making. I love making soap too. So it's a win-win either way. So let's get to the questions. My team has selected questions from all over and I think they're pretty broad. I haven't seen them yet and they're on a piece of paper right here. So I am just gonna read the questions and answer them. Here we go. So this is from basket.unboxing. How did you get into the soap making business? Oh. Super fun. I was always a really crafty girl, like always. It was rubber stamping, knitting, decoupage. Even in high school, I had a business that I bred Russian dwarf hamsters and sold them. So when I started making soap, it was pretty easy to do that jump in high school and start selling soap. And so I started selling soap and at the age of 20, it was really clear to me that my chosen profession as a correctional officer was not a good choice. And I was like, wait, I've been making soap and selling soap. I could do that. And then when I made over $1,000 at my first craft show, I thought, there's something much bigger for me here. I can teach people how to make soap so they can quit their jobs that they don't love and they can make soap and sell soap. So that's how I got into soap making. Let's see, Natasha. If you could only make and use one soap for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, Natasha, that is a tough question, but I would have to say if I could only make one soap for the rest of my life, it would be using the Brambleberry Lots of Lather Quick Mix. That's my favorite recipe of all time. I've been making it for 20 plus years, 25 years now. And I would probably either go unscented or use energy fragrance oil. I love that one. Oh, or relaxing. Ooh, relaxing or energy. One of those two. Wait, you said to choose one. Okay, I'm going with relaxing. <laughs> okay, listen to Kristen, and that's Kristen with two N's, says, what's the one item that you hate to make but people love? Well, honestly, I love creativity and I love crafting and it's such a huge part of my life. So if I'm working with my hands and I'm being creative, there's nothing I hate to make. I will say that candles are challenging. Um, from a cleanup standpoint, they're difficult. From a formulation standpoint, they're a little harder for me, but even those, I mean, even if you mess them up, you usually get something that's usable at the end. So Daniela says, okay, so we all have our reasons we love soap making, but what is the worst part of soap making for you? For me, it's definitely washing all the oily dishes. Yeah, wow, my voice is really going. Sorry about that, guys. I have had a busy week, um, but I feel great for what it's worth. So the worst part of making soap for me, so yeah, the washing of the dishes isn't awesome. I'll give you that, but I will say you've got it down to a science here. Um, the worst part of making soap for me, I is honestly, this is stupid, but it's weighing out all the oils. Just the like tear, pour, tear, pour, tear, pour. Like that's the worst part for me. And if that's the worst part, well, you know what? Best hobby ever. Uh, Stock Diva asks, what's the best advice that you have ever been given? Yikes. Well, I think the best advice I've ever been given is something somebody told me, my dad told me a long time ago. He said, how you do everything is how you do anything. Meaning if you are detail oriented in one area of your life, you're gonna be detail oriented in another area. If you have integrity, 
in your personal life, you know what? You're gonna have integrity in your business life. And I have really taken that advice to heart, both when hiring people, um, choosing who to trust, uh, choosing my friend groups, and how I act in my personal life, and trying to make sure that my personal life and my professional life match up, and I'm not one person at home versus one person at work. And so that's definitely the best piece of advice that anyone's ever given me, and it's totally proven to be true time and time again. So Smart Beauty One says, is there an alternate ingredient to use in place of lye, sodium hydroxide? I thought that was such a bad ingredient. You know what, on its own, sodium hydroxide, definitely not something you wanna put on your skin. That's true. It's commonly found in Drano, right? So it literally cleans drains. Like that isn't something you think would be great. But you know how it cleans drains? The sodium hydroxide binds to the oils and fats that are stuck and clogged in your drain, turns them into soap, and allows that water to wash it all away. So when you use sodium hydroxide in soap, the sodium hydroxide and the oils bind together in a process called saponification, meaning the lye is not present in the final bar of soap. It is no longer there. So on its own, yeah, lye, can, lye, is, lye is a scary ingredient, absolutely. But when it's used properly in the science of soap making, it's not scary at all. In fact, it is a necessary ingredient and no, you cannot make soap without lye. Organic Touch Malaysia, did I say that right? I didn't. Okay, Organic Touch Malaysia said, what happens to all the soaps that you make in your tutorials? Do you sell them, give them away as gifts, or use them on your own? That is a great question, and you're right. I make hundreds of pounds of soap for tutorials, and then on top of that, the team at brambleberry.com tests every single ingredient that we ever bring into brambleberry.com a minimum of three to five times. So there's hundreds of pounds of soap from all of that testing as well. And we donate it all to local women's shelters in Whatcom County and where it can do the most good. But of course, every time I go to lunch with anybody, they get a bar of soap for me or all the servers, if anybody is serving me at lunch, I leave a bar of soap for them. So yeah, I take them home, I use them, I give them to friends, but we make so much that we do have a lot that we do get to donate, which feels good. Let's see, Sam asks, what was your biggest, most horrible soap fail? Well. I've had a lot of soap fails, like lots. I've been making soap for 23 years now, literally 23 years. I would say my most memorable soap fail was the first five batches I made of cold process soap and they all failed. I rendered my own tallow, age of 16, and I rendered all my own tallow and there was only one book of how to make soap out there. The internet really wasn't kind of doing what it's doing now. There was just kind of AOL chat rooms and I rendered my own tallow found this recipe in a book, made my soap, but didn't know about stick blenders. So I was hand stirring and I hit what's called false trace, which is like a false emulsification. And really I think the entire mixture just cooled so much that the lard was starting to harden. And then I put the soap in a mold and waited for it to harden. And instead it just separated. And it did that five more, well, four more times on me for a total of five ruined recipes. And at the age of 16, after going through all the work of rendering my own tallow, I had to go to the butchers to get all this raw fat. That was really disappointing and I still remember it to this day. But for some reason that just invoked this like persistence that I just kept trying and trying and trying again until I got a successful batch. And then after that I was totally hooked. Sweet Relief Soaps asks, when and how do your best soap ideas come to you? That's a great question. I read a lot. Um, when magazine subscriptions were a thing, I had 39 magazine subscriptions. Now I just subscribe to the Texture app, which gets me 250 magazine subscriptions, which is amazing. So I read probably 30 to 50 magazines a month. I read quite a few books. I read multiple national newspapers and I also really love to keep up on trends. And so I'm constantly reading trend books and learning what kind of the next greatest thing is. And so all of my ideas are an amalgamation of 
all of that put together. I might see a really cool fashion design and decide to make a soap based on that color palette. I might just hear that neons are gonna be really hot in the next season, and so I might try and design an entire collection around that. So it really comes from fashion, from color, from fine fragrance, and just reading all about it and seeing all of those things. There's nothing more fun than sketching out an idea and then seeing it come to life in a bar of soap. It's really rewarding. Shangri-La Soap Company, or Soap Co, says, what is your all-time favorite fragrance to work with in cold process soaping and why? So it's either lavender essential oil, the 4042 from brambleberry.com because it stays totally water white, meaning it doesn't discolor at all, and it gives you a really long time to work with it, or it's energy fragrance oil from brambleberry.com because it smells so bright, fruity, and effervescent, and you can work with it forever. Meaning once you add it to your soap, you have so much time to do colors and swirls and designs, and it behaves beautifully. And both of those, that essential oil and that fragrance oil, they just last and last in your bars of soap. So those would be the two that are kind of always my go-to if I'm doing a really hard design. I'll usually go with one of those to perfect the design, just because they give me such a long time to work with them. All right, my question, oh, and this is from Samantha. My question is, when taking a cold process recipe, what is the difference between that and making it hot process? It's a great question. So on soapqueen.com, I answer this question in detail, so go search for it there. But basically, hot process soap is where you take your cold process recipe, you bring your soap to trace, and then you cook it. So that could be in the oven, that could be in a crock pot, that could be on a stove, which is the least safe of those methods, by the way. But it's applying extra additional heat to speed the saponification and heating process so that you can use that soap right away after it's hardened. Meaning you can make the soap today and instead of waiting that four to six weeks for cure time and dry time, you can actually use the soap the next day. Now, the key with hot process soap though, I found, is to age it because there is still a little bit of residual water left that still needs to evaporate out. So when you age it, the soap will last longer in the shower. But again, head over to soapqueen.com. I've got a really great explanation of it there. And I also have some fantastic tutorials about doing crock pot hot process soap making and in the oven hot process soap making. So Lisa underscore Anya, Anaya, 85, says, how long did it take you to get started on your soaping business? You know, it's always been this kind of process. I kind of came into it sideways, right? Like I had this little tiny hamster breeding business and then I was making soap and selling soap at the local hardware store in Chehalis, Washington. And then I was selling it at the gym and then I was selling it to my mom's friends. And then I was doing my college thing and got my first job as a correctional officer. And then I, nine months later, went into it really full time. But I had kind of been preparing for it for really my entire teenage and college years. So I would say it was a slow but consistent steady start. And if you're asking because you're wondering how long it's gonna take you to get into your soap making business, I would say it really depends on if you're doing it part time or full time. And if you're doing it part-time right now and you're like, when can I quit my full-time job? That answer is really personal, but I will tell you that going slow and steady and keeping your day job gives you a lot of freedom to be creative, try new things, really hone in on your packaging, hone in on your message, hone in on your target audience before making that huge leap to being fully self-employed. Vanessa asks, and this is the final question, do you have a website or Etsy where you sell the actual soap? You know, Vanessa, it's funny you asked that. Years ago, people were asking me, like, I wanna see this Soap Queen tutorial, right? Like, you made this beautiful thing, can I just see it? I'm a really tactile learner. So I was selling those bars on Etsy for a little bit so people could actually see the bars that I made. But then I kinda went back on that because really what I love to do is teach you how to make soap I love to sell you the ingredients to make really high quality soaps and lotions and bath disease and skincare masks and nail polish at home in your own home. So right now, all I do is focus on teaching and selling the raw materials instead of selling the finished products. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this Ask Anne Marie, despite my kind of raspy voice. And if you want more of it, I would love to do more of them. 
ask questions are down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get all of the videos that come out. And I'd love to see you interact with us on our Facebook page or on Instagram. Um, I love seeing you guys create stuff and post photos of what you create. So be sure to tag me so I can check it out. Until next time, you guys, happy soaping.